Hello everybody, my name is Amalgamash. Welcome back to the channel. This is MV3D version 0.6.4. This released on August 26th of this year, 2020, and I wanted to go over the new features that are in this plugin. So to show you that, the first thing we're going to do is open up our plugin manager, and then we are going to go down past our giant list of plugins and go straight to MV3D. If you'll notice, I've got 0.6.4, and I will put a link down in the description below to where you can obtain that. It is still the free version of the plugin, and um, it is free for both personal and commercial use. And I'm going to have my premium plugin turned on. That's just premium features for MV3D. And I'm going to have my own gamepad plugin turned off. And the reason for that is because the new features for the MV3D version 0.6.4 are, I'll just show you. We'll double click on that and take a look at the new options first. We have two new options that have to do with the options that you can select in the options menu for the player. You can keep these on by default or you can turn them off if you don't want the player to have access to them. One is invert the y-axis, that is the camera y-axis, and the other one is look sensitivity, which is the camera speed. And both of these imply the same thing. There is now gamepad camera control support in MV3D by default. This means you don't need a plugin, a separate plugin to obtain that. Um, if we scroll down a bit, we can see the real meat of the update. These three options here, mouse camera control, which is set to false by default. It allows you to use your mouse to actually control the camera. And in first person, that's, that's the uh, important part. Gamepad camera control, which is set to true by default now. And gamepad turn buttons. So your mouse control and camera control can only be set to either false or true and your gamepad turn buttons can be set to bumpers, triggers, or be left unchanged. If you don't want the player, I would assume, to be able to turn the camera with uh, individual buttons besides, besides the joystick. So we're gonna leave the defaults up just as they are, and we're gonna play around with this. So we're gonna go ahead and load in our boring old map that I've always shown you for when I'm testing stuff like this. And I'm using a DualShock 4. This is the same controller that I used to develop my own camera control plugin for this system. There's the map I wanted to load. And we have quite a bit of uh, stuff going on here. One, I'm just using my right analog stick and it's controlling both the X and Y axes of the camera. Uh, any choppiness you see, that is due to the size of my map and my render distance versus the specs of my PC. I have seen this camera control work pretty fluidly in smaller maps. So if you are experiencing some choppiness, that's going to be uh, decisions that you have to make as the developer. How, how big do you want your maps to stay in order to allow this camera control to stay fluid and smooth? but it's very intuitive by default. It feels like any other camera control in any game that allows it on that on the right analog stick. Now, uh, we have our bumpers, which allow turning of 90 degrees. And I'm gonna turn diagonal and see if it turns them diagonal. It does. So if you set your camera with the analog stick to be an offset, like right here, 45 degrees, and then you push your buttons, your bumpers, that will maintain as it either pluses or minuses, adds or subtracts 90 degrees to your to your angle. So we can go anywhere. We could we could face 90 degrees that way, and now we can look north, south, east, west. So awesome. That's it. Feels good. Uh, for options, we can immediately go and we can check out the new options, and that is invert. Y axis, you can turn this on if you are evil. You can change the look sensitivity. This has a max of 400. So if you are particularly insane, you can try that. And 
they take effect immediately, so... <laughs> Holy crap, I'm gonna throw up. Okay, whoa. Wow! And your camera travels along the floor once it hits the floor. Just as it should, and then you can look straight up in the air. So, a couple of things to note. I'm gonna go ahead and change the camera sensitivity back down before I go over my notes to give you... We want that to be like 80, I think, or maybe 60. 60, I think, is my sweet spot with camera speed. Ah, yeah, that's good, that's good. And the slower this is, the less choppy it should seem if you want to keep your big maps. Um, there is a hard limit on how far up you can rotate the camera around the player vertically. It stops there. And then the hard limit on down, it stops at the floor, and then it will slowly zoom into the player until it appears that you're looking through their eyes. Now the distance is not locked at zero. That is to say, you're not in first person mode. It seems like we are in first person mode, and I guess we are because I can see that, that disembodied name tag uh, floating in the air. Yeah, we're moving around, but you cannot change your perspective while you are in that mode. So if you want first person mode, I would use uh, plug-in commands or no tags per map to get that back and then you'll you'll be able to move around in first person mode. All right, and let's look at that again in in orthographic. So this was all perspective and these are my NPCs that I have set up where they offer different options when you click on them using Yanfly's click trigger event. This is camera mode orthographic. I don't like moving the camera too much in an orthographic setting because the camera is not really meant to do anything but be clamped and move around with the player if you're if you're doing anything orthographic. Uh, changing the angles and stuff while you're orthographic, that gives a very unrealistic, really awkward and uh, just just awful feeling we don't want to do that but there we go it looks pretty consistent still the, the camera control works just fine here we go the rotation of the camera hitting the shoulder buttons that's a lot better that's at least a lot better and that reminds me of some final fantasy tactics uh style of control over the camera, so that's great. Click on the slime again to get perspective mode back. Uh, don't mind my odd shaped, odd sized looking jugs. They are for a future video on no tags. And that's it. We're gonna look at the mouse stuff now, but we're gonna go into this dungeon that I just created. We're gonna turn on the mouse controls and we're gonna turn off the gamepad controls. I'm going to set the resolution scale to 0.10. That should do something pretty neat to the graphics. Yes, so the uh, resolution scale gave me a really pixelated environment. It's kind of got that video effect. I want you to try this in your game. If you've made a demo or anything like that in MV3D, I want you to change the resolution scale and just see how cool that looks for your project. I love it. Okay, so the Bumpers are now controlling the pitch of the camera, which I didn't expect, but that's cool. And the triggers are controlling the rotation of the camera, which is fine. And now I'm going to move the mouse. To actually activate it, you do have to click in the window, but then I can move the mouse. And our look sensitivity is going to play a really important part here, because the look sensitivity is really low. It's 60 which works great when you're controlling the camera speed with the controller, but when you're controlling it with the mouse, I don't have a long ways to go before I run out of a uh, mouse pad, before my hand doesn't want to move anymore. So that looks so cool up close. That resolution scale was a really, really cool thing to have in here. Uh, and that's not new, by the way. The resolution scale has been in here as far back as when I first discovered the plugin. So, the scroll button doesn't seem to do anything. Right click actually opens your menu. And left click, left click doesn't do anything. Now if you want to escape the active window, you can right click to open up the menu and then you'll gain control of your mouse again and it will no longer control your camera. And then you can just close out of the game. 
Okay, so one more thing we're gonna do. Well, setting the resolution scale to 0.5 stretched out a lot of my pixels and kind of made it look garbagey, but that's okay. That's okay. The camera control works just fine. If I click in the screen, I can move with the left analog stick on the controller while moving the mouse with the right. So you really have uh, the potential now to emulate the control style of your favorite game, whatever that is. You can, you can emulate the control style of any MMO now, any first person shooter. You literally have all of the control resources you could ask for. Uh, the only thing is that hard limit when looking up above, which I don't know of a single game anyway that allows you to go over 90 degrees over your character's head. And I don't know of any game that allows you to uh, go underneath your character. You can definitely look up kind of from beneath your character, and this is as good as it's going to get in, in this engine since our camera distance is so close to the character. They, we actually get really, really close. This is extremely close to the character uh, before they don't just disappear out of view. There's so many games. When I get close to the character, they'll disappear right about there. And it's annoying in an RPG when I want to get a good look at my character's face or get a better look at an outfit they're wearing or something. So really, this is, this is kind of as good as it gets. This is great. Those are the new features that came out for MV3D 6.4064 and I will leave a link in the description below so you can check them out for yourself. Again, it's free. Uh, please support the creator. Go subscribe to her Patreon or go to itch.io and purchase the perpetual license. I did one or both of those things because I have access to all of I guess I did both of them and I don't regret it. So. Thank you very much for watching. I hope to do more MV3D stuff now. I, I'm trying to tilt my focus back in this direction. And I want to do some tutorials and some other things, show you what I have learned to make your job a little bit easier. Uh, so stay tuned. I hope you learned something, had fun. If you did, pass it on. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, ta.